When we're looking for love, one of the easiest things to reach out to is love magic. But does it actually work? Hey there, saplings. Welcome back to Esoteric Moment. Today, we're going to dive into that very juicy topic of love magic. I think one of the most common things you hear when talking about love magic is you shouldn't do it because it messes with someone's free will. I actually think there are some very simple ways to practice love magic without messing with anyone's free will. Once upon a time, I was on OkCupid because I was single. When you're single, everyone asks you about about your dating and relationship status. I mean, everyone. It wasn't just family, I had coworkers. It was weird. At the time, I didn't actually want to be in a relationship. It seemed like a lot of work and I was pretty okay on my own. But I joined OkCupid because if you go on a few dates, then you have something to talk about when all these people in your life ask you about your romantic life. In this process, at New Year's, I did a little manifestation magic where I asked the universe for a pagan lover. No kidding, those specific words. And sure enough, I got a message within a week from someone who was actually pagan. And we went out for a couple months and it was fine. I got exactly what I was looking for from that magic, except it wasn't actually what I wanted. <laughs> for a whole host of reasons. I didn't want to be in a relationship, and while he was a lovely fellow, not really someone who I could see spending the rest of my life with. We parted on friendly terms after a few months, and I didn't really think much more about it. Except the following year, I decided I did actually want a relationship. I found myself in the beginning of January on a date with someone I actually really liked and this potential for like being with someone for long term suddenly became much more real. In this process though, all of these old self-doubts and worries and insecurities came roaring to the forefront and I was really worried that all of this in my head stuff would get in the way of this opportunity that I had never really encountered before. So I planned a very elaborate ritual and did a love spell. This love spell though was all about letting myself feel worthy enough for love. That was my blockage and so that's what I focused on. I wrote out a long ritual in my journal. There were lots of different symbols that I used including rose petals and different aromatherapy. I had my most like sexy empowering music possible play and I turned my whole apartment into this oasis of like romance. As I went through this whole ritual, I wrote out my intention, I built all of this energy. It was incredibly sensual and powerful. That ritual and that magic was so powerful that when I'm feeling shitty and like I don't feel worthy of the relationship I'm in, I can think back to that spell and all of that power and energy comes rushing back to me. I made sure that the symbols and music and energy I built in that spell would carry me through. Granted, a little bit longer than I anticipated. I thought it would work for like a year, but it's still kicking. The person who I had that date with that I didn't want to screw up with is now my husband, and I can say that we are very much in love. I, more importantly, have so much more confidence and love for myself, and I wouldn't be in a healthy relationship if I didn't love myself. Of course, I don't think everyone needs to just do love magic to make themselves feel good, although I do think it's a larger block for most people than they realize. But I think love magic is a powerful way of empowering yourself, opening communication with another person, and really providing healing to our world. Because if there's more love, there's less room for hate. Okay, so let's talk simple folk magic for love magic. You can do the basics. You can put rose quartz and amethyst all around your house or wear it. Both stones are great for bringing love energy into your life. I'd also recommend making a self-acceptance tea with a little bit of French sorrel, rose, thyme, and maybe a little lemon mint. French sorrel is a sweet, tangy lemon herb that packs a big punch in energy. It brings out the vibrancy while you're drinking it. Rose is of course associated with love and just 
feel sensual in a tea. Lemon mint again gives you energy and just confidence. Folk teas for me are not a one and done. If you are to intending to use tea for magic, I really think that you should focus your will and intention as you're making the tea and that you set a specific time period for doing this practice. I'd recommend a magical number that feels good to you, maybe three days, seven days. That habitual ritual is really useful. It reinforces the symbols and meanings that you've picked and helps your brain create a new neural pathway that says, yes, love is coming into my life. For the high ritual that I did for my own love spell, I am doing a spell card, a full write out of that ritual over on my blog. You can find a link in the description below. If you are looking to kind of replicate something like that, I strongly recommend it. You could also do it with your partner if you're looking to bring more sensual and affirmation to your relationship. I hope this inspires you to bring more love magic into your life, be it something simple and easy or be it something high and powerful. This week's sapling shout out goes out to Labradorite Wolf. He'd found me on Instagram and actually has a YouTube channel, so now I am following him there. If you want to be in a sapling shout out, leave a comment on this video about whether you have had love magic work or not. I've had really good luck, so I'm curious to hear about your experiences. Thanks for watching, and as always, may you find peace in the sacred grove.